Also, one of my favorite new charting software is I'm very excited about it. And I can't wait to give the mic to Jake. Well, thank you. And uh, first off, a big shout out to Sean. Uh, I get to see Sean probably once a month at the uh, Stocktwits meetups in Denver. He's a great guy. We, uh, we always uh, see each other at some of these events. So they're a great platform. You guys should definitely check them out. And uh, we're excited to kind of show you guys the charting side of the market and how you can utilize uh, the charts and make things more efficient with uh, your technical analysis processes. So um, without further ado, I guess I'll get started. Um, quick introduction, we are TrendSpider. And that, uh, that is a few different things. We're at the base, a charting platform. So you have the ability to really chart any different security you'd like, whether it's U.S. stocks, ETFs, crypto, Forex, um, futures that are end of day updated, but they have intraday granularity. I'll go into that a little more as we get through the slide deck. And uh, we also have uh, indices delayed 15 minutes, but all of these things will also be um, real time as we start to integrate brokerage integration, which um, will be on the roadmap when I get to that. Quick disclaimer, just want to let everybody know um, any stocks or charts that I talk about today are not in any way investment advice. They're simply just uh, ways that I'm utilizing the software to show you guys some of the core features and how you can utilize though, uh, those in an everyday kind of setting when you're doing technical analysis. So our vision at TrendSpider is to innovate. And uh, really in the industry, there's been a lack of innovation in the last decade. There's been some great charting softwares that came out, but there hasn't really been the next leg of innovation. And we, we really want to be that platform that innovates the way things are done. And not only the way you're visualizing things such as volume or price action, but also making the whole process of technical analysis more efficient. So that's a big thing for us because there is a lot of things when you're doing a chart, when you're drawing a chart or anything like that, that that's inefficient whether that's inefficient from you being biased or anything like that you know that is essentially um, what we're trying to solve is is make the process to the point where you're doing what you need to do and this and the computers doing the rest ie looking at your alerts looking at the conditional criteria that you're looking for to be um, met those types of things and I'll go into that a little bit later as well Quick stat about our team. So this is our founding team. That's Dan in the top left corner, Russ Lan in the top right corner, and myself at the bottom. Uh, we were founded in 2017 by Dan and Russ, who started the project as simply just a way to try to automate the process of drawing trend lines. It really started kind of like any startup as just a project to see if, if the process of automating trend lines could even be done. And uh, when it was done and we were able to go much further than that, that's when things really started to take off. Uh, we went to market in March of 2018. I joined the, uh, the team shortly after in June of 2018, and that was really as a founding member to help build the business side of TrendSpider. So we had really started the, the IP side, and we really needed to get that out to the world and show them what this, uh, the capabilities of this platform really were. Uh, our team is remote, so I'm in Denver, um, Dan is in Chicago, Russ is in Eastern Europe, and uh, so we are very much a remote team and it's, it's really efficient. You know, uh, there's never really a time during the day where one of us isn't working. We're kind of all around the world and, and that makes the whole process of just running the business more efficient too. So as you guys can see, the whole kind of point of this company, both for the product and the other side of it, the business side, is to make things efficient. So um, on top of that, a little bit about our product, we are 100% web-based, so you don't need to download anything. You don't have three laptops that you can use your platform on and that's it. If you go to a hotel and you wanna jump on TrendSpider real quick, log into TrendSpider.com and click log in and you're set up. There's no, there's no um, kind of, uh, um, you know, essentially uh, something that really keeps you from using it wherever. It's, it's very flexible, it's very robust. Um, and, and we're really proud of the uh, cloud-based structure that we have. As I mentioned a little bit about the data, uh, our real-time data is U.S. stocks, U.S. ETFs, Forex, and crypto. Our delayed data right now is, uh, you know, the CBOE index, indices and uh, the ICE CME futures. And uh, what I meant earlier when I said the futures are updated end of day but have intraday granularity. So let's say that you're looking at the futures data at 6 p.m. at night um, for the previous day. 
you'll still be able to go down to the one minute chart from the previous day and look at the price action. You just won't be able to get that price action real time until, or you won't get it real time, but you won't get that updated end of day quote until the end of day. And then you can see all that intraday um, action as far as candles and that type of thing. So um, really with any product, you want to solve a problem that people are having. If you're not, you're, you're really kind of, your product is lacking. And so what we really want to solve here are a few main things that traders face every day. Uh, that's bias and curve fitting at, at the forefront of this. So um, if you're trading, if you're charting out a stock that you just bought and you're really bullish on it and you know it's just nothing can go wrong with this stock, it's probably going to um, you know, show in your chart you're probably going to have the most bullish chart out there and it's going to look like your stocks, the next Apple or, you know, Bitcoin, because your bias is, is kind of in that analysis. Um, so what we do is we're not there to replace your analysis. We're there to complement your analysis. So um, there's a lot of times where I personally am, let's say using the automated trend line detection or the automated Fibonacci levels, but before I do that, I'm actually drawing my own trend lines with our manual drawing tools because I want to see, okay, this is my perspective. And then I want to see what the system's perspective is. And it's not necessarily just the system's perspective, i.e. there's three trend lines and these are the trend lines you can pick from. You can change the settings of the actual platform to, to kind of um, mesh with your strategy. So um, it's really about keeping your strategy consistent. It's not necessarily about just letting TrendSpider draw the lines for you. It's about automating your process of drawing trend lines and having TrendSpider do that across any stock consistently and within seconds. So um, as I mentioned, inconsistency is a big one. Fear of missing out really uh, falls into the alert category of TrendSpider. So um, we have a robust price alert system and conditional criteria system. I'll be going over both of those in a quick demo of the system. Um, once I get done with this, but uh, there's a lot of times where you know if you're a trader and you're and you're just at your seat, you want to trade. That's probably the worst or least um, optimal time to trade because one, you're irrational, you're kind of like emotional, you just want to get out there, you're bored. Um, you know, you want to let the market come to you. Uh, the biggest thing about trading is having a plan. And if you're going and just buying a stock because you have a whim that it's going to go up, that's not a plan. That's called impulsiveness. And that generally will blow up an account pretty quickly. And I can tell you that because I've done it multiple times um, when I was a, a trader in my younger years. So um, the ability to create these conditions or create these alerts on these trend lines and let the trade come to you allows you to do what you need to do during the day and not have to stare at the screen all day. This includes the timing and efficiencies. You're not there to stare at the chart all day. So the system's there to be your secondary perspective and let the market come to you. Um, this, this deals with the key reversals as well. If there's a big reversal, let's say right before you get to a trend line, you can use our sensitivity feature, which allows you to create an alert zone rather than an alert at the moving average. It's an alert around the moving average. And I'll go into that a little more as I do the demo too. Um, so the way that we solve all these issues are really five different things. Uh, it's the back testing engine. It's the automated technical analysis side of things, the multi time frame analysis side of things where you can actually overlay multiple time frames on a single chart. So you don't have to have multiple screens open at once. And I'll show you guys an example of that um, shortly. The cloud based alerts are nice because as I mentioned, one, you don't need to be on a computer that you've downloaded the software in. it's a web based platform. So any, any computer that has internet and the ability to go to trendspider.com um, is going to uh, essentially pull that up for you. So it's not, it's not um, you know, set to just a specific amount of uh, downloads on a specific uh, number of computers. The last thing that we have introduced, and this has been recently and it's going to get um, even more robust as we move forward, but the new volume and price visualizations. Right now we have one way to do that and that is uh, raindrops. So essentially we have a volume based candle um, that I'll go into and decipher a little bit and explain that, um, how that works. But that is kind of the fifth thing that we've really add to the platform to make us unique. Um, raindrops are completely unique to uh, TrendSpider. And so that is something that we're really proud of and think that really um, makes us completely different from any other platform out there right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over 
each, uh, each one of these different five kind of features I just went over with a static image. But then I'm going to go through a demo so you guys can actually see the platform in action and uh, see how all this works. Uh, but first, this is just an example of the strategy tester. Essentially, you just go here to strategy tester, you click on it, you get this uh, pop up that pulls up at the bottom, and you can test anything that you would like. Um, so whether that's a candlestick pattern, whether that is the MACD crossing uh, above zero with the RSI crossing above 50 and the vortex indicator crossing to the downside or whatever you want it to be, you can create a number of conditions and back test those. And I'm not sure if you can see this that well, but let's say that you like the back test. You can literally just go in and alert me next time that happens. So everyone's going to have their own strategy. And this is what we like to call uh, kind of us providing a public service where, um, you know, if there are, if there is somebody out there who's claiming that they, you know, can do, you know, their strategy is 80% uh, correct or has a, a mean of, you know, X amount over two years, you can go in and simply test that strategy and see if they're telling the truth. Or, you know, you could say, well, I'm, I'm getting a different, um, you know, number here. So I'll go into this a little more, but just wanted to show you guys the general way this works. You can test any strategy, any raindrop, such as like a blue raindrop, um, which is really powerful. And I'll, I'll do a, uh, an example of that here in a second. Automated technical analysis. This is the ability to draw automated trend lines, Fibonacci levels, um, the ability to automatically capture different candlestick patterns that show up on the chart. And you can see all of these different lines were picked up by the system based on these three preferences. So you've got your analysis type, which is really looking at the distance between the candles. So enhanced is one of our um, settings that is looking at more sensitive um, kind of trend lines, meaning that we're adding more trend lines to the to the actual chart. Let's say that we went to original, um, and I'll do an example of this uh, when I actually show a quick demo. Um, that will change how the trend lines are drawn. So this is by no means just trend line uh, trend spiders trend lines, and that's it. It's trend spiders automated trend lines that allow you to optimize your trend preferences to help you look at trend lines that you that would be relevant to you. Um, so uh, it's a really powerful tool, but it's not something to be used as an end-all be-all. It's something to help complement what you're already doing by hand. Multi-time frame analysis is probably one of my favorite um, features on the platform for a number of reasons, and I'll go over a classic example of that from um, last week and this week, um, showing you guys how to utilize this because at the end of the day, we've got a price, a daily price candle on the chart, but this dashed line is not a daily moving average. It's actually a weekly moving average overlaid onto the daily price action. So you can see how this shorter term price action is interacting with these longer term indicators and uh, trend lines. So you can do this multi time frame analysis on indicators, moving averages, trend lines, Fibonacci levels, um, that type of thing where anything that's like the manual process of drawing something, you can overlay that um, onto a, uh, a shorter term time frame. So the alerts, this is really cool. And so um, one thing that I have here is a mix of multi time frame analysis and the alerts on the same slide here. So you can see this is the daily price action. And this, this, uh, these bands are actually the monthly Bollinger Bands. So without having to open up the weekly, uh, excuse me, the monthly chart, and then pulling up the daily chart next to it, and then comparing where the price action is, you can literally see how the shorter term price action interacted with this longer term indicator. And these purple areas around these, these lines are the sensitivity feature that I was mentioning before. So you can see here, instead of just this little dotted line being the alert, this entire purple area is the alert because you can see the price action really never made it exactly to this dotted line. It only actually made it right below it. And so the sensitivity on the alert was, uh, was something that you could use to capture this move before the reversal. And you can see here, you know, right when we got close to this area, that was the time to get out because that was what, you know, we were in this area right before the, uh, the October uh, moved down into December started. So um, this is a, a really cool way to make your charts more consolidated, cleaner, prettier, and just overall easier to understand. Another thing that we have 
for alerts. So we just went over the alerts where you can add sensitivity zones on lines, moving averages, that type of thing. But this is what we call a multi-factor alert. And I know this uh, image is a little blurry, but essentially what you can see here is we have three different things that I'm looking for in this multi-factor alert. We're looking for the RSI to be less than 45. We're looking for the vortex indicator, the positive, which is the, uh, the blue, to be less than the negative. And we're also looking for the Williams percent range to be less than the constant level of negative 80. So you can see here, um, I created this alert. And one thing about this is there's no coding involved. So if you're using um, any other charting platform and you want to create a conditional alert like this or even a conditional backtest, you need to know how to either do PineScript language, uh, coding language, uh, Python, or some type of other coding language. So it's not just like I need to know trading, I also need to know how to code as well. Well, I'll tell you guys one thing. Uh, I am a found, uh, one of the founding members of TrendSpider, but I personally don't know how to code. That's not my strength. Uh, my strength is the markets. I've been in the market for a long time, but our dev team was, is just, rock star enough to know how to get this on the front end so all of the coding goes in on the back end when you put these criteria in so uh, it's just really helpful for those people who don't really know a bunch about coding and aren't you know uh, big tech uh, people um, so this is just a really cool example of all of these conditions going off i did add a few things here so i added the arrows just showing you guys okay this is the relative strength breaking below 40 I, I uh, manually drew a circle around this area, but you can see this is the area it broke down. This is when the percent range broke below negative 80. And then this is when the blue, the positive, was less than the negative. So when all of these conditions became true, you can see the potential breakdown alert triggered at 89.90. And you can see, uh, which is just kind of cool, it's, it's not relevant to anything, but it's cool how all of these conditions broke down right when the price action broke down below this trend line. And so uh, it's just a really efficient way to watch the charts without you having to have this chart pulled up constantly and waiting to know, okay, is the RSI below 40? Is you know, the percent range below negative 80? Is the vortex positive less than the negative? These are all things that a lot of people don't have time for, but the computer and the system is there to watch all these conditions for you and alert you through SMS or um, email when these conditions become true. And I'll show you guys an example of how I personally am getting ready for the week ahead with some of these types of alerts. All right, we are gonna go into the raindrop before I uh, move over to the, uh, a quick demo and some examples on the actual platform. So the raindrop is a volume-based candle that looks probably a little funky, probably something you've never seen before. And this is essentially the raindrop, and we'll go through each um, part or property of the raindrop here. So starting at the bottom, we've got the low. This is the low of the period. So it's no different than any other candle. You've got your high, you've got your low, and then what's different is all of this in the middle. So um, like a traditional candle, you've got an open. With a raindrop candle, you've got a average price weighted by volume, which just is your VWAP for in this case, this is the first half of the period. So this is the, uh, you can see shown by the yellow, this side is the first half of the period, this side is the second half of the period. And you can see there's a VWAP here for the first half of the period, and there's a VWAP here for the second half of the period. And what you can see about this is, the volume profile of each half of the period is, is, over, is uh, drawn or painted onto the price range. So what we can decipher from this general candle is during the first half of the period, a lot of the volume was focused at the bottom of the price range. And we know that because this is where the volume profile is. All of the volume is really focused right in this lower area. Into the second half of the period, into the second half of let's say the day, you can see that the volume started to pick up. We know that buyers started to come in because volume was pushing price to the upside. So in this case, we know supply was lacking, demand was pushing price to the upside because there wasn't enough supply to absorb that. And you can see how the daily price started to shoot up into the second half of the period. And we can see all of this volume created new highs. How do we know that this volume created new highs in the day? 
Well, there's no volume profile on the left side. So we know all of this price action was created from this increasing volume to the upside. And so what you can see here is, you know, the first half of the period was pretty tame. Second half of the period, buyers came in, pushing price up to new highs. And really a lot of that volume was uh, probably right in the middle of the candle's range. And so you can see here, the candle is green because the, the second half of the period's VWAP is higher than the first. So for anyone who trades uh, hollow candles, uh, hollow candles are kind of similar, right? The, the candle itself isn't really a function of what the previous day did. For example, you know, if, let's say that you um, gap down and your open is at $20 and your, your close is at 25 on a hollow candle. That's going to be a hollow candle because your close is higher than the open. And it may be, let's say, maybe it's still lower than the previous day, so it's going to be a hollow red candle. This is the same thing. Raindrops don't care about the previous day. The function of the color of the candle is simply based on if the right side VWAP is above or below the previous day. So, you, so whenever the, the right side or the second half of the period's VWAP is above the first period, it's green. You can see here, whenever the VWAP for the first period is equal to the VWAP of the second period's can, uh, half, you can see that it is essentially blue. And, uh, and that is a very important raindrop, and I'll do a couple examples of that on the back tester, how these can be used for volatile times possibly ahead. And uh, with the bearish raindrop, you can see here that essentially it's the opposite, right? You've got the VWAP for the second half of the period lower than the first half, and that's why you've got a red candle here. So those are the different types of raindrops. I'm going to go through a couple examples of those and show you guys how you can actually use these in real life. Um, I know they're very peculiar, peculiar, and uh, you know they're probably. Uh, you know, something that you're like, okay, well, that's a new way of looking at things, but how can this actually help me in the markets and when I'm looking at price action versus volume? I will answer that question for you, I promise. All right, let's check it out. Let's check the system out, see what it's all about. Um, and we'll do that by just going to the spy chart here. Um, and Anka, how am I doing on time? About 15 minutes left? All right, I'm, I'm gonna assume that I'm doing good on time. So, um, one of the things about our first chart that we have up here is SPY. So, um, one of the things I'm looking at on SPY is a few things, right? So, the first thing I'm looking at is uh, this kind of visual back test that I created. So, this is actually not part of the systems back test, but essentially what I was looking at was I was looking at, okay, any time since we really bottomed out in December, um, you know, any time that the MACD was below zero, the percent range started to pop up. And you can see that the MACD was below zero but started to increase. So that's my first condition. Second condition is the RSI starts to pop out above over, oversold. Third condition is the Williams percent range starts to pop out um, above over, uh, over, out of it, oversold areas. So we have the same exact setup here. We've got the MACD below zero. We've got the MACD starting to uh, tick up. We've got the RSI that recently just got, got out of oversold areas. And we've got the, the Williams percent range trying to bounce out of oversold areas again. This particular time, you know, was, uh, was a little bit of a, a fake out. So you can see we've already been in this particular area before. This was kind of our, uh, a fake out too. So this could easily be a fake out, but I don't have time to look at the screen all day to see if this is actually going to break out, break down, whatever. Um, for me, I, and this is just personally me, this isn't advice how to trade or anything like that, but for me, if the price action does break through this trend line and this EMA 50, which has been very hard resistance multiple times over the last two weeks, that could be something that I would look for a bigger move. So what I can do here is I can actually create all of these conditions in the system to watch these conditions materialize. So what I do is simply go to create alert, multi-factor alert, and remember we're looking for a potential breakout, so let's do that as the alert name, potential breakout, expires in 30 days, and we can start adding our conditions or our parameters. And so the first parameter, as I mentioned, is I want the daily price action to break above 
the EMA 50. So that's what I'm gonna do. The condition is the daily, so we click daily. We're looking at the for the indicator, which is the EMA 50. And, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. We have to do the, yeah, sorry, I did that right, actually. The daily indicator, EMA 50, and we want to say price has broke through it, and we could do a buffer area of zero. So that means I want to know just when the price breaks right through this area. I don't want any buffer. I don't want any zone around that area. The next thing is uh, we have to um, we have to essentially define that, right? So we have to do condition. We do the daily. Same thing. Um, price. In this case, the close is greater than the daily. EMA 50. So we have to do two conditions here for the system because we, the system needs to know when the price broke through it and when the price is greater than the EMA 50. Because if we just did the EMA 50 is greater than or the daily price is greater than the EMA 50, well, that's all of these prices here. Like that's every single one of these prices. So we need to know when the the, the price breaks through and when the price is greater than. So that that makes the entire condition true. The next thing we we're looking at was the MACD crossing to the upside. For me, I like to see the, the fast, the blue crossing above the slow. So my next condition is this case, same thing, the daily indicator. In this case, we're looking for the MACD fast has crossed up through, same thing, it's an indicator, it's on the daily, and it's the MACD slow. So this is my second condition. Third condition is the daily indicator relative strength index is has crossed up through let's say this was around 55 so let's say uh, closes a crosses above the console level of 60 and then our last condition is the daily uh, we're looking at the percent range down here and let's say that we want the percent range to break above this is negative 50 so let's say break above negative 35 same thing where it's the indicator Williams percent range has crossed up through the constant level of, in this case, we said negative 35, and you can see that this is just, um, I'm getting that from these areas here. So this is right around negative 39. So I want to know when the, when the percent range breaks above this high right here. So that's why I'm doing negative 35. So when all of these conditions become true, I will get an alert. So instead of me having to have this chart up all day, me sitting in front of the screen all day, I can just have these conditions in the system when the end of the day closes and all of these conditions become true, that's when I'll get an alert. Um, and so when I create the alert, you'll see that it pops up here in the alert tab as a potential breakout. You can even see you know, different types of, um, you know, different types of alerts that I've created up here. But what's really cool about this is, let's say that you really want to get an idea of, you know, essentially uh, what conditions have become true, which ones still have to become true. You can go to this little uh, magnifying glass here, view last check status. And when any of these conditions start to become true, you'll see them start turning from no to yes. And uh, that's something that's really powerful because you can essentially see the status of the alert, see, okay, is it halfway through? Is it a third of the way through? Um, and this is important if you're looking for trades or, you know, there's always an opportunity cost of another trade. So, you know, maybe if there's another trade that's ahead of this, maybe that's the one to look at. So this is what that's for, just to get an idea of at any time how far along that uh, particular um, condition is. Now, another thing that I want to do for next week, I've got my conditions set up, right? I've got the MACD, all of my um, lower indicators primed for a breakout. If they do break out, I'll be alerted. But I also want to know if we break down. I mean, I, it, the market can do whatever it wants. I have no idea what it's going to do, but I need to be ready and have a plan to execute at certain levels. So for me, you know, breaking above this EMA 50 is going to be big. But this is where the multi time frame analysis comes in. When we were really taking a dump um, in the last uh, you know, few weeks in early August, you know, we broke through the EMA 50. We broke through the daily SMA 20 very quickly. So it's like, where are we going to find a bottom here? 
And for me, I generally am not going to use every moving average under the sun because it's just not efficient. I like to use the SMA 20. I like to use the EMA 50. Just my preferences. Um, it kind of, you know, it kind of picks up some of the really important price action, especially for the EMA 50. So, you know, we're breaking down, we're breaking through the daily levels. So this is when I turned on MTFA and I'm like, okay, well, you know, we're starting to break down. We already broke down through this trend line. So if you guys can see this, you know, this was the very obvious trend line everybody and their family was looking at, you know, before we broke down through this line. So it's like, okay, we broke down through the daily EMA 50, SMA 20, and this trend line. Where are we gonna, where are we finally gonna catch a bid here? Well, that's when I turned on the EMA 50 from the weekly chart. And you can see here how literally, you know, this area has not caught only this previous action perfectly, but it only missed this area by a few points. So this general area has been kind of like the status quo, if you will, because when we really started to break out here uh, in, in January, early February, this was the area that the price action really needed to break out through. And when we did finally break out through this area, notice we pulled up, pulled right back to that area before creating a base for an absolute blast off. So that is the first time where this really became uh, part of, quote unquote, the status quo. Then when we started to break down, you can see, you know, we did actually do a false breakdown through this area, but all in all, it held pretty well. And then we had a nice continuation up, pulled back once again. And uh, if I add the monthly Bollinger Bands here in a second, you'll see what, this is pretty cool too. But, you know, when we finally did start to find resistance at the monthly Bollinger Band on the upper band, um, that's when we pulled back, fell right back down to this weekly EMA. And so, you know, instead of me having to split the screen, pulling up the weekly as well and seeing, okay, well, that's great. You know, the, uh, the, the daily, uh, the weekly price action only shows that there's a wick here. It doesn't necessarily, because this is, this is the EMA 50 and this is the weekly chart. So you can see this is the daily and you can see now how the shorter term price action was, was really interacted with this area three different times in the last two weeks. You wouldn't really be able to tell that with these two wicks. You couldn't tell anything except that we, we got there and bounced off pretty quickly. So this is a way to not have to pull up this weekly chart and make assumptions about the daily price action. You just pull up the daily price, you overlay the weekly uh, whatever moving average or whatever indicator you're looking at, and you just have one chart open. So you're not having to have too much, uh, too much going on at once. And uh, I, I use this religiously. I mean, that's one of my favorite things to use. So you can see here that we've got an alert right on the EMA 50 below on the weekly, but let's say that we do break through. And uh, you know, if we turn on the daily EMA, that's pretty much right near this trend line. So I don't really need to make an alert at this trend line because we'll be alerted if we break through the EMA 50 on that multi-factor alert I created. But just to show you guys how this works, create alert at this trend line. And you'll see how, if I move the sensitivity all the way to the left, you'll see that this is just a line. However, if let's say that I want to know anytime the price action gets maybe um, within, let's say around a dollar of the price action, a dollar three, I can start moving this over and you'll see that this alert zone starts to get bigger or smaller. So um, in, in case that, let's say the, the, the market reverses right before we get to this area, this sensitivity feature allows me to capture that move and know, okay, we just reversed right before we got to the EMA 50. So uh, what you can do here and the way to do that is, right now the confirmation candle is set to daily. So that means that um, the daily candle needs to close and before you're gonna get alert. Let's say that you wanna be alerted anytime the, the 10 minute candle closes in this purple area in case you're trading intraday let's say you're you're swinging on the swinging on the daily candles but you're actually making the trades intraday you know you'll you're going to want to know before the day's over you know to get that alert so we could always we could go all the way down to the 5 minute candle so let's say that we've got a big daily wick that pops up in here but then we pull back the daily candle confirmation candle will catch that move and you'll be alerted um, whenever the 5 minute candle closes in here and you'll get that through sms or email so it's a way for the system to really be your secondary perspective, give you some margin of error so you're not having to capture these exact price points because at the end of the day, nothing is precise in the market. Everything's 
got some margin of error in it, some type of you know wiggle room. So um, that's what we really aim to do here is give give traders a little wiggle room when looking for those areas of uh, support and resistance. So that is how I personally am getting ready into the week ahead. Um, you know, this as I mentioned a little bit before. You know, this this daily EMA fifty and this weekly. EMA 50 have just been a perfect area of kind of like ping pong for the markets. And so a break between these two areas is really going to change the status quo into next week if we do break through that area. And we're getting very close to the apex of this wedge. So personally, I just do think there's probably going to be a decent move. Um, I was on a show with Encar earlier in the week. I did, I did say in that show that I thought we were going to close lower for the week. Um, we, I guess, technically did, uh, let's say, yeah, we technically did, but barely. But the biggest thing is what's going to happen to next week? Well, I have no idea. But if I was going to kind of decipher the things that I looked at on the chart today, you know, if we did break through that EMA 50, I think that would probably be your status quo changer to, uh, to you know, say, okay, maybe, maybe it's time to start looking at things a little more. And uh, just to mention the Bollinger Bands as well. Uh, I mentioned that we were finding resistance on the upper Bollinger Band. You can see that here. These are all these are the um, alerts that I essentially had on the upper Bollinger Band before we broke down. So I actually knew, okay, we're getting close to the upper Bollinger Band here. Things are getting a little overheated. And that's when I actually went pretty heavy in cash because I knew that we we're getting close to this band. And if we look back, we the daily price action has not touched this band in years. Um, so that was that was definitely a, uh, a kind of a signal for me that the market may be a little overheated and outside of its boundaries. Um, so that's just a cool way you can overlay a longer term Bollinger Band on the shorter term price um, chart. You could do this with anything. Let's say that you're a day trader. You want to do the 10 minute with the 30 minute Bollinger Bands overlaid. You can do all that too. Essentially, you just click MTFA, go from your primary time frame, which is what the chart is going to show your candles in, and then you do verse monthly, weekly, um, any time frame that's above your primary, you're able to overlay that on the chart. So um, that's, uh, that's really some of the cool core features that you can utilize. Um, you know, let's say that we're gonna go to just a random stock here. I just wanna show you guys how you can utilize some of these. Um, you can utilize some of these uh, automated trend lines as well. And so we've got Amazon. Without me having to do anything on my end, I can just literally click trends here, turn on the trends button, and these different trend lines are popping up. So without me having to look at anything, support's already been identified. And one thing I wanna mention here is, this is our timestamp. So the system has not updated since August 8th. So all of this price action here has not technically been taken into account yet. So if I go ahead and update this, the system is actually gonna find new trend lines based on some of that updated information, um, I can even change this. Let's say I want to do uh, have the system instead look for body to body instead of wick to wick. I can apply, and then the system's literally going to change its analysis based on how the system is now connecting the bodies to bodies instead of the wicks to wicks. So it's a very um, versatile system. It allows you to customize the automation capabilities and allows you to keep your discretionary technical analysis, but also allows you to get a secondary perspective on um, the price action. So going into a quick case study on the candles before I run out of time. Um, so these are, the, these are the raindrops, and I just want to do a cool example of how you could utilize the raindrops in a real life situation. So you can see here that essentially we've got, a, uh, we've got our uh, resistance line here. This is back in uh, mid-October all the way to late January. So this, this was a pretty long trend down. And you can see we tested this trend. Uh, you know, we connected these two points. So we've got this point, this point, and that's you know those are two points that we can extend to make a trend line. Voila, we've got a third point here that finds perfect resistance, continues to extend, and we've got another guy here that ends up popping up. And what's really cool about this is if you remember what I mentioned about kind of the volume profile of this uh, candle. This is the first half on the left. This is the second half on the right. We can see during this false breakout, there wasn't a lot of volume above the line. A lot of this volume was really aggregating below the trend line. So even though it looks like you know, there was a slight pop above, 
it wasn't a lot of volume. It was 100% a false breakout. And you definitely know that because into the second half of the day, which is just the right side of this candle, there's no volume profile at all uh, at the top of the range. So remember, this is the low of the day. This is the high of the day. There's literally no volume at the high of the day into the second period. So we know that buyers were definitely not in control into the close. If you compare that to when we finally did break out of this trend line, you can see something very different. You can see here, a lot of this volume was, was really focused and aggregating above the trend line. And so you compare that, which has literally zero volume during the second half of the day, and then you compare this candle that has most of the volume focused right at the top of the high of the day above this line, that was really your breakout signal. And I mean, if you look at where this breakout started and where it ended, um, that's a pretty solid uh, move. You know, this is, our, this is our little pop above the line. And then we continued up 15% for about two months. So um, I'm not saying this like was the end all be all to, um, you know, kind of the, the breakout that got us to new all time highs this year, but it was showing us the differences in what a bullish kind of volume candle raindrop looks like versus bearish. And so anytime that you want to see strength in a raindrop, you want to see a lot of that volume focused at the top of the range. And, um, and if we split the screen and we show you and we go to a hollow candle, you can kind of compare these areas and see, okay, well on the hollow candle, and this is really cool. This is one of my favorite examples to show. Um, you can see that, Yes, we did close above the line, but most of that was the wick. We don't know where the volume was for this candle. We just know that the close was above the, the red line. However, in this raindrop, it's, it's telling us a lot more of the story. It's telling us there actually was a lot of loading at the top of this range, and then we were able to decipher, okay, there is some strength, and this was a, a signal for a breakout. Um, so that's that's a way that you can use the raindrops in a real life situation. And here's a quick example of how you can use the blue raindrops for volatility. So I'm just going to go to the strategy tester here. I already have my condition in. My entry condition is a daily raindrop has evolved. So anytime a blue raindrop forms, that's going to show an entry. And my exit, let's see how the blue raindrop forms after seven candles have passed after this blue raindrop is formed. We can test that, and you'll see here that uh, when I show this on the screen, there's some pretty big moves. Um, now, not all of these moves are positive, and not all of them are negative. They're just very volatile moves showing within you know five to 10 uh, candle periods, there's gonna be a decent size move. So if I go back here and show you guys kind of the, the start of this, our first candle, blue raindrop within seven candles, 2% move up on the common stock. That's a pretty decent move, especially if you're playing the options. Here, we've got a blue raindrop, and we've actually got a move down. Um, and this is a little deceiving here. It says the exit is negative 1.33%, but that's just because that's what the candle closed at on the seventh day. If we wanted the actual max drawdown and the max gain within this entry and exit, you just go to download CSV and you'll get all of that information that you can utilize however you'd like in a spreadsheet. So if you wanna see what was the max drawdown, what was the max gain, those types of things, that's gonna be in your spreadsheet when you download it. But we will work on visualizing that back test as well. So you'll be able to see, okay, here's your entry. Your, your max drawdown was, let's say, you know, 1.5%. And then your, you know, your max gain was, uh, was uh, let's say, you know, I, don't, I can't see it here because this is just telling me what the close was. But I'm going to say this was like 1% or 2% above the blue raindrop. So the blue raindrops are not here to be a buy or sell signal. They're here to tell you there's possibly volatility on the way. And so the, the blue raindrops don't happen that often. But when they do, especially in a downtrend, you'll see you know, these can be a, a pretty big sign of a, a bigger move. Here's your entry after seven candles, a 3.47% move down. Um, so that, that's a pretty big move. So that's about all I have for today. Thank you everybody for listening in. If you have any questions and want to reach out, please feel free to uh, do that through hello at trendspider.com. I did want to go over a couple last minute things as far as the roadmap goes. 
Um, so, you know, what you see on the platform today isn't necessarily the final product. We do an update about every two weeks and try to get a new feature in um, once a month. So you can see in Q3 right now, we've almost completed all of the things that we had on the list. Um, we are still working on some new drawing tools and more history. So you'll see probably when I was showing my chart, we can only go back about 320 candles. But um, with, with uh, the, the see more history, you'll be able to go back a thousand candles. So that will really help for those that want to see a longer um, kind of history of the, the price action. In Q4 into uh, the first half of 2020 is going to be a lot of uh, scanning tools. Um, scanning tools where essentially you'll be able to create your, your multi-factor alert and then you'll be able to scan the market for those conditions that you're looking for. So um, on top of that, let's say that you want to create a multi-condition alert, but you want to apply it to more than one stock, you'll actually be able to apply it to an entire watch list. Um, and so that will fall under watch list alerts. And on top of that, we're looking to add, uh, we already have candlestick pattern recognition, but we're looking to increase that to, you know, bull flags, bear flags, inverted, uh, inverse head and shoulders, head and shoulders, cup and handles, that type of thing. So um, that is coming in the later half of 2019 into 2020. And then finally, hopefully in the, uh, in the summer months of 2020, we'll be able to start our broker integration. You'll be actually able to execute manual orders through the platform. So let's say your alert goes off um, and then you want to actually execute an order based on that alert, you'll have the ability to make that trade. So a lot, of, a lot of things coming in the future. Uh, this isn't a final product by any means. We, we are really just trying to make the most robust and innovative product out there. And that takes time. Um, and we, we only have about 16 people on our team. So uh, we try to work as diligently and as efficiently as possible. But with limited resources, we do sometimes have delays. So I uh, just want everybody to um, get an idea of where we uh, plan on heading. And um, you know, if you have any questions, as I mentioned, please send us a um, email at hello at trendspider.com or you can check us out on Twitter at trendspider or stop twits, Facebook, all of them are just at trendspider. If you are interested in checking out the platform, you can use the coupon code TOL21 for 21% off any plan for 12 months. Let's say that you wanna do a test ride before that, you do have a free trial for seven days before committing to anything um, to pay. The last thing I want to mention is we do have a chart contest until tomorrow night. So let's say that you uh, really have a chart that you're really proud of and you want to share it with the community. Um, you can go to tr uh, Trendspider, hashtag Trendspider Contest 19 to uh, submit that. And you could win a free account for a year and a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. So um, let's say that you, uh, you know, you're interested, but you want to possibly uh, you know, win a free account, make sure to submit that chart to Trendspider Contest 19 uh, on Twitter. Hashtag Trendspider Contest 19. Thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate uh, Anka, you guys having me on, and uh, everyone's time on this Sunday morning, and I'll answer any questions if they're, uh, if they're there. Awesome. Thank you, Jake. You do have some questions. Uh, awesome. Question number one comes from Rockstar. And uh, he's asking, are the range drops based on market profile concepts? Uh, so it's similar. Yeah. So essentially, you're, you're painting the market profile of the first and the second half of the period on the price range. So it's, it's giving you a general idea of where that volume is, the, where the profile of that volume is on the actual price range. Okay, that's awesome. Another, uh, another, um, uh, another uh, trader is asking, and this is Mark. Uh, Mark is asking, can you share? Uh, can you still share some uh, some charts uh, with different uh, uh, with different symbols? He's interested in uh, Boeing and the spies. Sure, uh, for raindrops. Uh, for raindrops, yes. Sure. So let me share my screen again. All right, so let me clean things up a little bit. Go to SPY. All right, and I'll just, uh, oh wow. Actually, I didn't even realize we had the blue raindrop yesterday. <laughs> so uh, this is SPY. We've got a blue raindrop uh, 
wow, me not knowing that is kind of sad. But um, yeah, so this is an, a great example of SPY showing there's probably going to be a decent move um, in the next couple days. And just based on simply the back test that I did, and this is literally just the just the indicators I use. This is not like uh, buy or sell, but just based on the ones that I look at, how those lower indicators are setting up with this blue raindrop, that kind of makes me even more confident we may just rip to the upside next week. But um, this is what the raindrop looks like on SPY. Uh, Boeing, Let's see, uh, raindrop's looking interesting here. So the way that we could decipher Friday's raindrop is a lot of that volume on Friday, especially during the second half of the period, was aggregating near the high of the day. So you can see here that it's a green candle or it's a green raindrop because your VWAP for the second half of the period is higher than the first. So that's where the green comes from. And uh, this is a cool example of this as well, right? Um, even on Thursday, we could see during the second half of the day, a lot of that volume started to aggregate at the top of the price action or the price range. And then we had our continuation up. And even uh, on Friday, we saw a lot of that volume into the second half of the day aggregating at the top of the, the price range. Um, and I, I think I mentioned this, but just to let you guys know, this little, this little cross in the middle is just the VWAP for the entire candle. So, you know, pretty much it's just the middle of these two, uh, the right VWAP and the left VWAP. So um, does that answer your question? I guess so. Um, and one other question, um, is Forex or individual currencies available on your charting system? Yes, Forex is definitely available. Uh, not for raindrops though. Uh, wait, uh, volume data. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we can't do raindrops on the actual um, Forex, but we usually... We... Yeah, and the question was not for raindrops, I, oh. I guess. Yeah, it's for charting. And we, we do have raindrops. I don't know why that just popped up. But yes, charting, we got Euro USD. Um, you know, let's say that you're looking at the chart. You don't necessarily want to like identify every trend line. Just go to trends and these trends are gonna pop up immediately. Um, you can see that I didn't do anything on my end. The system on the back end has just got specific uh, settings and properties that it's looking for um, based on these particular formulas on the back end. I don't wanna to get too technical, but all of these different colors of the trend lines are based on a formula. So um, just to quickly show you guys how this works, if we go to show trends in all, you'll see these are every single trend line that the system is finding based on the preferences that we're in. And as we start to un as we start to filter this, let's say more lines, you'll see these lines start to slowly disappear. And these variables that are looking for some of the main properties of a trend line, the number of hits on a trend line, the number of points on a trend line, bounces, all of these variables start to be taken into account and the system starts to filter out these lines based on relevancy. And then finally, when we get to most relevant, these are all of the lines that are most relevant based on the system's properties. Um, you know, this right now I think is uh, based on body, uh, this is wick to wick. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to have the system draw body to body, you would actually be having these uh, trend lines be volume weighted because remember, the body of a raindrop is the VWAP, not the opener to the close. So these are technically like volume weighted trend lines. Um, so yes, the long answer to that is yes, you can do Forex. and. Uh, um, individual U.S. stocks, ETFs, that type of thing. Uh, and we are working on definitely uh, expanding that data as well as we start to scale operations later in, down the road. Okay, Harry is asking, can you please take a look at Amazon? Amazon, yes. All right, so let me just delete all these entries and exits. Uh, so a couple things with Amazon. We've got the raindrops here. Um, with, the, with the trend lines right now, notice we've got a few different things, right? We've got one, this is body to body. So that's why these trend lines are looking a little weird because we're, we're connecting the bodies of the uh, raindrops rather than the wicks. If we change this wick to wick, that's going to change how the system's looking at the lines. And remember, the system actually has not updated the analysis since July 28th. So that means anything to the right of this vertical line is actually not being taken into account into the system. So when I update this and have the system look at every single 
candle on the chart, you'll see that we're gonna get different trend lines here because now we, uh, we have more data to go off of and the system's updating those trend lines as we have this new data. Um, does that answer your question? Do you want me to go over the raindrop for it? Um, uh, Harry, does that answer your question? Do you wanna see it on uh, regular candlesticks or raindrops? What is your, uh, what is your preference? Let, let us know. Um, while we're waiting on his response, one thing I wanna show you guys that's really cool is another uh, candle formation that we've done some research on. And this is what we call a balloon raindrop. So you'll see here, we've got this kind of very strong downward sloping uh, channel back in May into early June. And you'll see, uh, this is what we call a balloon raindrop. You've got this, you've got this uh, candle that's forming and it actually is breaking out of this channel. And what you can see is it kind of looks like a, a balloon, like, uh, it's no different than if you put hot air into a balloon, the balloon is gonna rise. And that's kind of what we look at as like the demand rising within this uh, range. And you can see it looks like a balloon because a lot of that uh, demand that's rising is aggregating right at the top of this price range. And you can see anytime that you've got a decent balloon breakout, you've got a nice continuation up. Now notice that this looks like a balloon as well, but the difference is the, this did not form at a breakout. This is your continuation candle up. This is your actual breakout candle. So um, just like any other candle formation you're gonna look at, you know, you can have a hammer technically anywhere on the chart, but you're gonna wanna look at a hammer at the, bottom of a, at the bottom of a channel at support when the RSI is oversold or something like that. Same thing here. You're gonna want to look at different variables. You're gonna wanna look at, okay, is the RSI breaking out? Are there other variables here? But for me, the biggest thing is the, the balloon raindrop needs to be breaking out of resistance. If it's not, it's not a balloon. Um, it's, it's just kind of a, it looks like a balloon, but in this case, it would just be your continuation up. Um, so that's, that's just one thing I wanted to let you guys know. This is a really cool balloon to watch. This is a really cool raindrop to watch for on breakouts through cr crucial areas. But does that answer your question, Mark? Mark? Okay, he's good. Okay, okay. You, have a, uh, you have a couple of more questions. Sure. Janky is asking you, do you have a video to learn your software? Yes, absolutely. We have, a, we have a user guide blog. We have a ton of blog posts that have user guides uh, with videos and demonstrations on how to utilize these things, as well as strategy guides. So yes, there's a ton of documentation on this that you can go and check out on trendspider.com. I'll just show you guys real quick if I'm already here. Uh, it's just trendspider.com and then you would go to blog and go to categories and go to uh, um, where is it trendspider user guide and you can check out all of the different user guides that we have all of the different resources that type of thing all right janky is also asking can you take a quick look at csx sure oh wow that looks beautiful um, yeah, so CSX, let's see what the trend lines look like. Uh, I just turned on fibs, not trend lines. Um, so this is kind of, wow, yeah. So this is, this is a great example of the system finding a lot of lines that you may not need all of these lines. So, um, you know, the system's not there to find the perfect lines and then just, you know, you don't have to do anything else. Sometimes you gotta go through these lines and, you know, filter them out. So for me personally, you know, one, I, and what I'm doing here is I'm just holding down the shift key and clicking the lines that I don't want. So, you know, I'm clicking this one, this one. And as you'll see, I'm gonna slowly start to see this very kind of tight uh, apex that the price is in right now. So we've kind of got this very, very close uh, breakout either to the upside or the downside. If I was to guess, I would probably say this is uh, gonna break to the upside given how much uh, downside and the gap above. But from a candle perspective, you know, same thing, you've got this candle with a lot of the uh, volume for the second half of the period kind of aggregating at the top 50% of the price range. So for me, with this type of candle right at a resistance line like that, you know, that could be something to definitely keep in mind into next week. But, you know, all the things that we're going over today are simply just ways that you can um, look at the system. You know, my, my opinion of this is, you know, not better or worse than anyone's out anyone else's um, just kind of based on these criteria I would say you know it does look like this maybe has a decent chance of a breakout if volume can come in 
And, but that, you know, that, that's when I would have to bring in a ton of other things. You know, what does the weekly candle look like? What is, uh, and right now we don't have a weekly candle for raindrops, but like right now we can see that the weekly candle looks decent right here. Um, you know, so for me, the, the raindrop would just be a, a confirmation of a ton of different confluence of indicators that I'm looking at. All right. Uh, the next question is, can you do a FIB tool demo? Sure, absolutely. So um, let's just do FIBs on this, this area right here. Um, so the FIBs right now, you can either draw them manually like any other platform. So let's say you want to capture this measured move down to here. You just draw the sequence. You can change your colors or your different areas you want to watch with properties. So, you know, let's say that you don't want these FIB levels above. You can take all of these out. So, you know, the 1.236, the one, all of these above you can take out. You could change this color, let's say to blue if you'd like. And if you are using the FIBs, let's say you want to capture maybe this move up to the, um, you know, 67.81 area price. Same thing, create alert at this drawing. If you want to have a little uh, uh, wiggle room around that line, you can increase or decrease your sensitivity just like any other um, indicator on the chart. And so that's one way that you can use the FIBs if you really like to draw your own FIBs. But if you actually want the system to maybe take a stab at it for you, um, you can always go to auto fib, which is turned on. We have the fibs turned on here and you'll see this is the measured move that the system is capturing right now. Um, the measured move is a function of the trend properties. So you'll see here, if I change this from wick to wick to body to body, the system is going to change how it's drawing that fib. And now it's connecting the bodies of these raindrops rather than the, uh, the wicks. So you can see here, and I change back wick to wick. What did I just do? Okay, one second. CSX. So um, as I was saying, uh, if you wanna change this back to wick to wick, you'll see that it's capturing the wicks now and connecting these two wicks. If we wanna, let's say, change the analysis type from enhanced to original, that's also going to change the uh, measured move here and you see um, since original is a very um, big range of candles, so you can see here if we, and I don't want to get too technical and confuse everyone, but these base points are how we decide the, the, the distance between candles that we're connecting. So in this case, you'll see on original, the base points are 35 on the daily. So that means we're looking at a distance between 35 candles or more. If we go to original enhanced, you'll see that this base point now goes to 10 and we're capturing a much smaller move because we're looking at a very much smaller length of candles between each other. So that's how you're getting the discrepancy between you know, changing it from uh, original to enhanced and even uh, experimental, which is another base point setting. Um, that will actually capture a slightly different move as well. Um, actually, in this case, it's capturing the same one since the base points on experimental are 11 and the base point for the daily on enhanced is 10 so you're going to capture that pretty much the same move but remember when we go to original that's when we're capturing a much bigger move here can you hear me still uh yes um i guess uh brian you're sharing the screen right now uh we Okay. Oh. Okay, good. Oh, Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, just, I need to pull it up again. Okay, so uh, back to the base points, right? So you can see here, we're capturing this bigger measured move, and that's because the base points, the distance between the candles we're measuring is larger. And so now we're capturing, capturing this move from December all the way till uh, late April, rather than you know just this shorter term move. Um, hopefully that answers your questions about the fibs um, and how you can utilize those. The fibs are very unique as far as the alert system goes. You can create an alert on any of these levels as well. Okay, one last question. Uh, Kevin wants you to look, take a quick look at CPRI. Capri. All right, so CPRI. 
Um, we can turn on some different levels here. We'll turn on the trends. Um, so these are the trend lines that the system's kind of capturing here based on the original settings we're in. If we change this up, let's say to enhanced settings and change this to body to body, um, you know, these will change. And a lot of the time, if you change to hollow candles, um, sometimes the actual trend lines will change as well. Since, you know, if you're doing body to body, the open and the VWAP are going to be a little different. So, you know, this is changing it. Let's go back to WIC. You'll see that these are changing how the system's looking at things as well. Um, one thing I want to mention quickly, these blue lines right here, these a lot of the time are like a uh, center of gravity line. So it's, it's kind of a very untraditional line, but it's capturing the general trend. So you can see here, this is really just capturing the downtrend here. Um, one thing that's really cool as well, let's ignore or let's respect gaps. The system's literally going to change the, the, the uh, analysis again because now it's, it's uh, kind of making a rule about how it draws lines through gaps. So uh, same thing, if you wanted to start um, changing this up a little bit, you can start deleting by holding the shift key down and getting rid of some of this noise. Um, so that's how uh, you could use this on Capri. The raindrops, same thing, look a little interesting with uh, a lot of that volume um, kind of at the top of the price range um, on Friday. So a lot of that volume is aggregating in the second, uh, second half of the period at the top of the range. Any other questions before we hand it off to our next presenter? Uh, not so far. Um, okay, Josh is asking, do you have it for futures? I can, ask, I can answer that. Yes, you can have the charting for futures, but you take it from here, Jake. Yes, yeah, so the futures is available, but it's end of day um, update right now. So if you're trading futures real time, this may be a little bit of an issue for you. Um, if we, if you do go to the futures chart afterwards, um, you know, let's say later in the day, it's not like you're just getting the closing price for futures. You'll be able to go through the chart, get the intraday candles and all that. So you can do analysis based on the historical data from that day. It's just, you're not going to get that real time. This is uh, an issue that we will be fixing once we get, um, brokerage data integrated, and we actually may have a fix for this before that um, with one of the partners we're working with. So we will keep up um, the work on the future side, but we definitely have um, made some progress on that front in the last couple months. Um, but it, let's say that the, the product isn't there for you yet, but you do want to get updates, you can always join our mailing list. Just go to trendspider.com, go to the very bottom, and you'll be able to join the mailing list that way. And you'll get updates whenever these things do become available. Okay, that's awesome, Jake. Thank you so much. And thank you for your questions, guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I have been starting to uh, use uh, TrendSpider for the last three weeks and I absolutely love it. And one other thing that I love about TrendSpider is that if you're newer to trading, and if you really don't know how to draw a trend line, uh, how to uh, how to calculate a fib uh, from what pivot to what pivot in uptrends or in downtrends, uh, this is a fantastic tool because you can back test your knowledge. So uh, you could do it on the drawing board. See if you got it right. Go to Trend Spider, and you could have it right there automatically drawn for you. So it's so self-explanatory. It's perfect, especially for beginner traders and even for more advanced traders to perfect their strategies I, I just absolutely love it thank you so much Jake I really appreciate appreciate you uh, being here with us uh, today all right everybody.